from the growing club and today I'm going to be showing you how to convert your sprinkler system into a drip system. Sprinklers are really inefficient ways of watering plants in general. Um, what they do is that they spray water up in the air and onto leaves of plants where that water will then mostly evaporate into the air and very little of it will reach the roots of your plants. And so what we're going to do today is replace a sprinkler system with a drip system. And so I've, what, you see, what you see behind me, this is called drip irrigation tubing. And this tube has these little black emitters in it every 12 inches. And this tubing, when, I, when we finish hooking it up, will drip water right onto the soil, right where the plant's roots are and will, this is a very efficient system compared to the sprinkler. It puts the water right where the water is needed. Okay, so the first part of installing a drip system is actually closing off all the sprinklers on your system. A sprinkler system generally is divided into stations and you, can, you can't mix sprinklers and drip on the same station. The reason is is that sprinklers put out a lot of water very quickly so a sprinkler head you know might put out several gallons of water in a minute whereas a drip system puts out water really slowly so if you have drip and a sprinkler on the same system in the amount of time that it takes for the drip system to put out a gallon the sprinkler might the sprinklers might have put out 10 gallons and so you don't want that kind of mismatch so the first thing that we're going to do is find all the sprinklers that are in that one station, the sprinkler heads, and just go ahead and screw the sprinkler head off and then replace it with a cap. And so you're going to do that to all of the sprinklers on that one station and then move on to the next step. The next step is to actually convert the sprinkler head that's closest to your garden beds into a system that will allow us to move from the PVC piping here to this kind of drip irrigation tubing. So for my system here what I have is a half inch pipe coming out of the ground and that's attached to the sprinkler head. So I'm going to remove the sprinkler head then I'm going to attach an elbow and this is an elbow that has a female side and a female side with threading on both sides. So that means this is, both of these sides can be screwed on to here. So I'm going to screw this on. And then into there I'm going to screw on this adapter. This adapter allows me to hook up to my drip irrigation tubing and the drip irrigation tubing will just jam right on to this fitting. So I'm going to screw this in here now. Now depending on what's available at your hardware store, you might not find these exact type of fittings, but just talk to someone over there and they'll help you find the one that fits right onto your system. You might even want to take one of these pipes with you to the hardware store so you can find the exact fittings that will work for your garden. Once you have your adapter on your sprinkler head, the next step is going to be to install um, the backbone tubing okay so what this is this is tubing that has no holes in it all it's going to do is deliver the water from where we put that sprinkler adapter on to the places where we want the water to actually come out um, so this this is just a half inch it's called half inch blank irrigation tubing and um, we're going to connect that to the starter fitting but before we do that what we need to do is dig a trench. And so you see I've already dug a trench, starting from where my adapter fitting is, going close to all of my garden beds. Because what I'm gonna do is lay down the tubing in this trench and then attach my tubing that has the emitters to this tubing. The important thing um, when you're 
purchasing these drip irrigation materials is to purchase all materials from the same brand because each brand has a slightly different diameter of tubing and if you buy different brands they won't all fit together. I know it's silly, it's annoying, but just buy one brand and stick with it and it'll save you a lot of headache later. All right, so now I have my blank tubing and I'm just con gonna connect it to this adapter that I already put on here. So all I have to do to connect it is just push the tubing over the adapter and kind of wiggle it back and forth. And once I hit the end, I'm this is a snug, really tight fitting. It's actually really, really hard to get these off. So this is watertight completely. Um, when you're putting this, this type of tubing on, it really helps to have some gloves with a, a nice grip to them because your thumbs and your hands will get really tired if you don't have good grip on your hands. So now I'm just gonna roll out my tubing right down my ditch all the way to the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut in my tubing and insert this T adapter. So when you go to the irrigation supply store or the hardware store, you'll find adapters like these for the tubings. You have a T adapter, you have an elbow adapter, they also sell a straight adapter for mending uh, broken tubing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this T adapter here into this tubing and the way I'm going to do that is very simple. I'm just going to take a pair of hand pruners or any other you know, sharp cutting tool and just make a cut right here. And then insert this T into the tubing. And again, I just push it in. And then again on the other side, simply push it in. And now I have a tight fitting there. Once the T is in, then I'm going to connect some more blank tubing into the other side of the T. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut here right where about the soil is um, so that the pipe reaches just above there. And then I'm going to insert an elbow into that pipe, into this pipe here. And then put another little piece of pipe onto that elbow. And now cut, make another little cut so that just my pipe is reaching into the bed. And now that I have my little connection on, I'm going to use another T. And I'm going to use one of the side connectors, not the center piece, to connect into this tubing. And from here, we're going to connect our actual um, tubing with the emitters in it. All right, and now I'm going to start to connect my emitter tubing. So you can see the emitter tubing, it looks almost just like the blank tubing. Um, but every 12 inches, you'll see one of these little black uh, ovals. So you can see one is here. Now we got another one here. And we got another one here. So they're spaced 12 inches apart and the water will just drip, drip, drip out of these emitters. When you buy this tubing, um, it comes in different versions. There are some where the, the emitters are 9 inches apart, some where the emitters are 12 inches apart, some where the emitters are 24 inches apart. There's also different water ratings for the emitters. So you, you could find tubing that where each of these emitters is going to emit half a gallon per hour or one gallon per hour. Just Choose one and stick with it because that way you'll have even water wherever you're using this tubing. So what I'm using again is the 12 inch spacing and one gallon per hour per emitter. So to start now, I'm gonna take that uh, T piece that I just put in and I'm gonna put my emitter tubing into here. And it is a little difficult to put these on. Okay, now I'm just going to unroll my tubing 
down the length of my bed. And when you're unrolling the tubing, you do want to actually unroll it. If you just try to kind of pull it off this way, it'll get all twisted up and it's difficult to put to roll out. So actually unroll it down the bed. And when you get to the end, go ahead and make a cut. You want to leave a little bit of excess just in case you want to move, move, you know, make any adjustments. So I'm going to cut way up here. That way I got plenty. So the next step is to attach our next lines of tubing. The number of lines you attach to a bed is going to depend on the width of your bed. So these beds are about three feet wide, so I'm going to attach about three lines of tubing. So now what I'm going to do is I took a, uh, about an eight inch piece of blank tubing and I'm going to attach it here to this T. Okay, and now I'm going to attach another T right here. So this is going to be my, I'm going to attach three lines of tubing. This is going to be my middle line. Now I'm going to attach another eight inch piece of tubing here. And then I'm going to put an elbow on the end. So now I'm ready to attach my second and third line of my emitter tubing onto this. What I'm going to do when I'm attaching my next lines of tubing is that I'm going to cut my tubing here so that my emitters are not lined up. The emitters, like I said before, on this are 12 inches apart. And so what I want to do is stagger them so that I get a really even coverage over my bed. So you can see this emitter that I've already, this tubing that I've already attached has an emitter here. So what I'm going to do is cut this next tube so that the emitters are halfway in between the emitters on this existing line. So I'm going to make a cut um, just about here. So I'm going to cut off this end. And now when I attach this second line of tubing, my emitters will be staggered. So you can see I rolled out that second line of tubing. Now I'm going to attach my third line of tubing. To measure where I'm going to start on this tubing, I'm just going to line up with my emitters with the first line because since I staggered on the second line, the third line should be set should be cut the same way as the first line. So I just line up my emitter and then I make a cut and now attach the third line in to this last elbow here. And now I'm just going to roll out this third line and the front part of this bed is done. So now that I have my connection all together here in the front of the bed, the next thing I'm going to do is just pin my tubing in place so I know exactly where it's going to go. And so what I'm using are these U-shaped, they're called ground staples. And what you do is just take that staple and put it around the tube and into the ground. And it should hold the pipe in place. So um, I just got a handful of them here and I'm going to go along the bed and just pin the tubing so that it's nice and evenly spaced apart all the way down the bed and it's in the position that I want it to be in. So here at the end of the bed, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use one T adapter to close all of these tubes off. And so what we're doing is we're creating a loop between all the tubes. Not, there's no start point and there's no end point. They all just come together. And that means we're going to have even pressure throughout the tubing and the water will get distributed very easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut the end of this tube off, the center tube and I'm going to attach this T piece here. So I'll just 
make sure we're at the end of the bed and that looks about right. So I'm going to make my cut here and push this on. Once that center piece is connected, I'm going to connect just one of my other tubes to that piece. The reason being is I'm going to leave one tube unconnected because before I close this whole thing off, what I want to do is flush the tubing out. So before I, I actually connect everything together, I'm going to leave one tube empty, on a, unconnected on every bed, turn the water on and let all the, any dust or dirt that might be inside these tubes get flushed out. That way they're not there to uh, clog the emitters when I turn it on. So I'm just going to make this cut here and close this one off. So now what I've done is I repeated that same process that I did on this first bed here onto my second and third bed. I took a branch off of our main line, I connected it up to the top of the bed and laid out three lines of tubing going down the bed, spaced them out with my staples, and then connected only two of those tubes at the end and left one off. Once your tubing's all together, you need to install your filter. And the place that you want to install your filter is right where your valve is. So if you had a sprinkler system, there's probably some place in your house where you have a bunch of these valves next to each other under some kind of box. And what I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to demonstrate on this, free, this loose valve how to install the filter. So what you'll need is a pipe cutter. And using the pipe cutter, whatever is coming out of this end of the valve, so that's the end that doesn't have the black attachment pieces to it, you would cut that pipe off with the pipe cutter and then unscrew whatever is connected here. Okay, and you're, you won't need that anymore. What you'll then do is take your filter and your filter will have an arrow on it the, with the direction of the flow of water. So the direction of the flow of water is going to be down from this piece that doesn't have the black connectors connected to it. And all you're going to do is screw in your filter here and now that your filter is in you're going to use a piece like this this is a three quarter inch female to female PVC connection it doesn't have threading on one side so it's just smooth on one side on the inside and it has threading on the other side so what I can do with this is I, I screw it on to this uh, filter and then on the other side you'll connect back to the PVC pipe that you cut before so for example you have a PVC pipe like this you're going to use this Christie's red hot blue glue and what you're gonna do is with the with this glue you're gonna apply a little bit around the end of your PVC pipe and then you're gonna apply another amount here on the inside of this PVC pipe and just glue those together. Okay and now all the water that comes through here gets filtered by this filter. To empty these filters out usually they just come up with a screw end cap like this and so when you open that up you can kind of dust, uh, push, push out whatever's been filtered out and also if you need to, probably every few years, you open this whole thing up and you can, re you can replace the actual filter piece inside of here. Okay, so once you have that, then your, um, your water is going to be, doesn't, it's not going to have any particles in it that will block up your tubes. The other piece that you might need that I don't have to show you is a pressure regulator. So when you buy your drip tubing, um, on the tubing there'll be a uh, rating for how much pressure that tubing can handle. So maybe this tube, you know, maybe the tubing says it can handle up to 100 psi of pressure. Well, if my pressure at my home is only 50 psi, then I don't need a pressure regulator to keep this tubing in good shape. 
But if my pressure in my home is say 120 PSI, which it might be in certain areas, then you'll need to attach a pressure regulator after the uh, Y filter to bring the, the pressure down so that it doesn't burst the tubing. Okay, but in most cases, all you'll need is the filter as long as you're using this half inch uh, thick walled drip emitter tubing. So now that everything is set up, the last step was to turn the water on and flush these pipes out. So I've done that. You can see the water is coming out here. And it's also coming out here. And we're just going to let this run for a minute or so so that all the water is coming, is, uh, all the piping is getting flushed out. And after I let this flush out for a minute, I'm going to turn the water off and make this final connection. And then my drip system will be done. So now I've got my water, my tubes all connected together and I've turned the water on. And you can see here, the water is dripping out nicely out of all the different, all the emitters. And we have good coverage over the entire bed. And so now we can start planting. Thanks for watching this video. I hope uh, this gets you started setting up a drip irrigation system at your own home. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them as best as we can. And if you want to keep seeing our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Hi, thanks for watching this video. My name is Rishi Kumar and I'm a member of The Growing Club. The Growing Club is a group of individuals and small businesses in Los Angeles working together to create a more equitable and sustainable future. Every month, The Growing Club works to educate our members, our local community, and our global community on how to grow food sustainably, regenerate our urban and suburban ecosystems, and create supportive and strong communities. Every month, we offer educational community events here in Los Angeles and produce free online learning materials available to anyone. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider joining The Growing Club. Your monthly contribution will help create more videos like this one available to anyone worldwide for free. To join, head to thegrowingclub.com and see how you can become part of our growing community. Thank you.